Hey, what is up guys? This is MoTeC Reviews, and today we're gonna to be talking about pre-built PCs. Who are they for, and how to pick a well-performing pre-built PC, and avoid a lot of the money pits and the poor and underperforming options out there on the market today? So, without further ado, let's get right into this. All right guys, so pre-built PCs get a bad rep in the PC community, and there are a lot of bad options out there, but that doesn't mean that there are also some really great options as well available for you. Now, there's a few keys to picking a really nice pre-built, and I'm gonna get into those in a bit. But first, who are pre-builds for? Well, if you have a busy adult life like me, I have a full-time job, I run this YouTube channel, and I also have a family, so that doesn't necessarily give me a lot of time to order parts and track them down, and then get them in and build my own PC. Um, and especially with a lot of the shortages out there as well, there's a lot of parts that you can't necessarily get your hands on at the moment. Now, the second reason is gonna be warranty. So pre-built PCs come with an overall warranty over the whole system. So you don't have to track down each part individually. Instead, you can just track down the whole system's warranty and some manufacturers give you up to three years on the system uh, as a whole. So it makes it really easy for you to get uh, a fix in or really get a brand new PC if everything goes wrong. And third of all, it's gonna give you that peace of mind that the manufacturer is gonna configure the whole thing out to be compatible and all the parts are gonna be compatible with each other. So if you don't know much about PC parts, you don't have to worry about which parts to pick and which parts to go in your build. So now let's talk about how to pick a good pre-built PC and avoid a lot of the money pits and a lot of the poor uh, and bad options out there on the market. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, I do a lot of reviews on gaming peripherals as well as gaming setups. And now I'm expanding into PCs and I have a couple of upcoming videos on uh, different gaming monitors as well as a brand new Razer mouse. So if you wanna keep up with all of that, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel uh, with notifications on because that's gonna be the best way to support the channel as well as keep up with all the upcoming content. Now, let's get back to the video. All right guys, so let's talk about the first thing you need to watch out for when picking a pre-built PC. So I'm gonna be talking about the design of the case. Make sure that the case you're picking is of a standard size. A lot of big manufacturers design their own custom cases and have their unique looks to set themselves apart. But in reality, these cases are not great for performance. So a lot of them use proprietary parts like proprietary motherboards and power supply units. And as your PC grows older, you're gonna find it very difficult or basically impossible to replace these parts because they're proprietary to the manufacturer. Uh, so avoid anything with a custom look or a unique look and pick something with a standard size. The second thing uh, you need to look for in terms of uh, design is airflow. So make sure that the case has a lot of really nice uh, openings for airflow. So anything with restricted front panels, side panels, just avoid that because you're gonna have an overheating PC and you really don't want that uh, because uh, thermal throttling and overheating is gonna kill the performance of your PC no matter uh, how high-end your parts are inside the PC. So watch out for a standard case and really good airflow. You have to have these two things when picking a pre-built PC. All right guys, so the second thing you're gonna wanna do is only pick pre-built PCs from manufacturers that are really clear and upfront about the parts that are going inside the PC. So what I mean by that is a lot of big manufacturers uh, tend to cut corners and save money uh, on parts that are not so obvious to you as a consumer, like the power supply unit, the motherboard, and the CPU cooler, as well as the RAM. So these are things that you don't really look at. You're probably looking at the CPU or the graphics card as big highlights, but these are things that uh, get cheaped out on. So let's talk about each one and what you wanna avoid uh, in these, each of these parts. All right, the first part we're gonna be talking about is the motherboard. Make sure that the motherboard is not of a proprietary size so you can upgrade down the line uh, much easier. And also make sure that you have an option that is uh, included in it for Wi-Fi. Either it's built into the motherboard or you have a Wi-Fi card that is supplied by the uh, manufacturer. So you can have a Wi-Fi connection right off the bat when you get your brand new PC. The second overlooked part is the power supply unit. So uh, a lot of pre-builds come with kind of generic or off-name supply units or something proprietary. So these could be highly unreliable and risk your whole system, or if they're proprietary, you can't really change them if you need to down the line and if you're upgrading pieces uh, as, you, as the PC grows older. So make sure that you're getting a reliable power supply unit from brands like EVGA or Corsair. That's just gonna ensure that you have the peace of mind that you have a really good base for your whole system. Now guys, I know winter is coming, but you don't want your PC to be your heater. So watch out for the CPU cooler that's included in your pre-built PC. A lot of big manufacturers use these stock Intel or AMD coolers that just come with the CPU for free. And they're usually a small fan around 80 millimeters and they're just not gonna cut it for gaming performance. 
So make sure you have a bigger fan or preferably an AIO liquid cooler. And that's just gonna ensure that you have really nice temperatures inside the case and it will just have a longer life for your PC because your parts are not overheating and thermal throttling the whole time. All right guys, now the fourth thing you wanna watch for is the RAM. A lot of manufacturers have sort of a overlook or poor configuration of the RAM channels on the motherboard and they use only one stick. So for example, one stick of 16 GBs of RAM. What you're gonna to wanna to look for is the dual channel memory or two sticks of RAM in there. So if you want 16 GBs, make sure you have two sticks of 8 GB RAM that's gonna give you extra performance at no extra cost. Now guys, finally, ask yourself this question. Does the pre-built PC configuration make sense? So for example, if you have a i5 CPU and a GTX 1650, which is sort of a budget pre-built, do you really need 32 GBs of RAM if it's configured in there? You don't. So make sure that you're not paying extra money for uh, certain parts that you don't really need, like extra RAM uh, for no reason. All right guys, so now it comes down to price. Take the PCs that you've narrowed down, hopefully now you have only a few options after you've narrowed down the case and the parts, and plug in each one of these parts into PCPartPicker.com or another website that's similar to it to find out how much it would cost you to build it out on your own. So after that, add any additional tax if you have any in your region, as well as $100 to $300 for the convenience of assembly from the manufacturer, as well as shipping. So that way you can make sure that you're getting a fair deal on the pre-built PC. And also look at the warranty. Some manufacturers give you one year, some manufacturers could give you two or even up to three. So pick the one with the higher warranty because why not, right? You get more peace of mind and longer support for your pre-built PC. All right guys, so hopefully now you're down to only one or two options and they're both gonna be fantastic for you. I follow these exact same steps to get to my pre-built, which is the Corsair i7200. And I'm really loving the performance so far. Corsair is very transparent about all the parts that go into it. So I had the peace of mind that I have all the reliable and upgradable parts uh, later on in my PC. Uh, and when I plugged it into PCPartPicker.com, it was only about $100 to $200 cheaper for me to build it out on my own. So I'm really happy with this deal and I think it's a fair deal for the convenience offered from this pre-built here. All right guys, so that is all on the steps on how to pick a well-performing pre-built PC. I hope you found this helpful, especially if you are considering a pre-built PC at the moment. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel with the notifications button on because that's gonna be the best way to support the channel as well as keep up with the video uploads. I have a couple of really nice videos upcoming here with a couple of monitor reviews as well as a brand new Razer mouse review. So there's a lot to look forward to. Have an awesome day guys and I'll see you guys next time.